go ahead and begin as uh, we will have people, we do have people here from various parts of the world and uh, both here on Zoom and on Facebook and, um, and other places to see this in time. Um, for my colleague Karen and everyone else at the Elliott Bay Book Company, which is located on Duwamish land in Seattle, where it is early afternoon on Saturday, uh, Saturday, January 15th, um, the actual birth date of Martin Luther King. Um, and it is still January 15th in Paris, where we are delighted and honored to have poets Marilyn Hacker and Kartika Nair joining us. And we know people are here from other parts of the world between here and there and, um, and, and maybe time zones beyond. They are going to read from and talk about this beautiful, extraordinary book of poems, Orenga, um, that was written by the two of them um, over a period of a year and two days, if, the, if these poems I think are dated and I'm recalling correctly, um, starting with the onset of the, of the pandemic as we had to have all been living with it and have had it upon us and, and going through it. And um, both of them in Paris, but except for at least one occasion in this book um, where they actually see each other, it's from a distance um, and they are writing each other um, in this form, which um, they will um, take what something in the end of a poem and carry it over. And they do this um, over a year's time, um, not every day, but, but many days. And maybe there were everyday poems. I mean, that'll get talked about later, what, how many poems um, might not be in this, but they, were, they had this exchange going, um, of which records life and records that life as they were having everyone, they and others were having to live it and have been having to live it, but also bring in um, other parts of the world and in, in the various ways we have been carrying on about the world and including their own um, loved ones and familiars in south of India or in Beirut um, and things that have happened, you know, things that have happened there and elsewhere. I mean, what's going on in the US was with, with George Floyd's killing is in here and many other things. I, I, this will all unfold as they read from this book. Um, and this is one of a few readings they've done um, we're delighted to be able to be among the people getting to do these. I, you're, you're, I think the book itself um, came coming from Milkweed Books out of Minneapolis. Uh, I read an earlier copy and then I was delighted to see what they did with the book. Milkweed has been doing beautiful books. And so you read one, one of their voices is in a rust color type and the other is in black, um, just the more conventional, but they, it helps set up the, the back and forth in doing this. The two poets you're going to hear from are themselves um, significant and wonderful poets. Um, Marilyn Hacker, of course, has um, been known here. She lives in Paris, but is known in the US, um, the author of 14 books of poems, um, with a, another one to come later this year, um, Blazons and A Stranger's Mirror being among the more recent and significant. She also um, uh, is the um, translator for 18 works of uh, translated poetry from the French, of both French and Francophone poets. We we're talking about a, a, a one of these online programs she did with Algerian poet Samir Nagrush um, in the last two years, in the last year, I think, um, done online. And um, she has received numerous honors and awards, including the Penn Award for translating Marie Etienne's um, King of I can't read my own writing here. King of a uh, hundred horses, <laughs> hundred horsemen. Um, done. Uh, I remember that book for our Strauss published in the U.S. Uh, as well as a Penn Volcker Award for her own work. And then Kartika Nair, who um, who's um, probably most known in the U.S. for a book that um, took a few years to get into the U.S. from uh, from India and U.K. Um, her extraordinary book, uh, Until the Lions, Echoes from the Mahabharata, which uh, Marilyn was among the enthusiastic you know, writers and champions of, which won uh, the Tata Literature Live Award uh, in India, but has been published in the US by Archipelago Books in a beautiful edition, a book of many different poetic forms, but giving um, female voices from that book more uh, latitude and, and amplitude. And it's an extraordinary book. She also um, has done other collaborative works like this in, in terms of working with another poet and artist, um, that being a book published in India over an above ground, uh, above or an underground uh, in Mumbai and Paris, a book that has two poets from 
a poet from India and a poet from uh, France and an artist uh, from India and an artist from France and they're, they're changed cities and it's a marvelous um, collaborative work and her own ongoing work as a librettist, as a co-founder of a dance company Eastman. She's worked a lot in um, other performance play modes, um, um, opera and dance, and is also the author of a beautiful eco fable, The Honey Hunter, which is um, available in the US as an as a illustrated children's book um, as well, with more of that to come. Anyway, I today they will um, read from and talk about a different distance, and then I'll come in toward the end and see where the conversation's going, but we hope you will put questions and comments in here as well. Um, and uh, Karen's been putting in um, uh, information on in the, in the chat about their book, this book and other books they've written. And um, we hope you will um, read this beautiful book, which you are now about to hear. So with that, um, for everyone again at Elliott Bay um, and Milkweed Editions in Minneapolis, um, we thank you for wherever you are for joining us and now ask you to please join in giving good virtual attention and applause to two extraordinary poets, Marilyn Hacker and Kartika Nair. Thank you both. Thank you, Rick. Um, well, I, we're good. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I just, now I just see Rick's name on the screen writ large. Um, uh, we're, go um, uh, we're going to read three sections of, uh, from the book. Uh, I, I, uh, I think uh, useful to explain that the Renga uh, is a Japan uh, originally uh, Japanese uh, syllabic form uh, made up of uh, uh, Basically, uh, for e e each poem is made up of either four or six stanzas of um, uh, three lines, two lines, three lines, two lines, five, seven, five syllables, and then like, which is haiku, of course, and then seven, seven, five, seven, five, seven, seven, and possibly yet again. And, uh, uh, and traditionally in, uh, I, um, in Japan, this was, uh, a form that was practiced collaboratively, sometimes very playfully, uh, usually by poets who are in the same place drinking wine together, um, where one poet would um, write a, a section which is called a tanka, and then the second poet would pick up uh, with a word or a phrase from the last line um, of um, what the person preceding had, um, had written or recited and uh, write or uh, improvise one to follow and so on. Um, uh, uh, so I'm going to start, um, and and this is sort of in, in media's rest because the uh, the the um, uh, sequence had already been going on for almost a month, and um, so I will read mine and then Cardi will read hers. Uh, and I, I think there are about uh, eight, eight. I think I think I, th I think eight or eight or ten, eight or ten of these short poems that we'll read in this section, and then very brief pause, and then we'll read another section with a, 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 from a different from a different uh, bracket of dates. <clears throat> <clears throat> One more spell. One more incantation. It's only the art of the fugue, or Hildegard of Bingen, or Alice Coltrane. Music cal calms anxiety. Abida Parveen sings a half is chazel, cross legged, eloquent with hands. I pick out a word or two. April 6th, 2020. <laughs> Two words now for me. Hum dekhenge, we shall see. Iqbal Bano soars skyward on Fez refrain. And something steelier than hope lights the heart once more. Heart that fluttered last evening, stalled a few instants. A frog in the throat these days hearkens to beasts less winsome. 
9th April 2020. Ego, clawing beast, with or without our selfhood, beasts try to survive. As does each isolate I, newly dispensable or in the equation. Lock up these, those forever, then open the doors. I open late windows on unnatural bright April, 10th April, 2020. Bright as this April, Isa, flushed after cycling from Pontin, risking dour fines we none can afford, brings me dorayaki, homemade, with sweet red beans crushed and flour ground by Nico, who'd foraged for weeks. Balm for my bile-deluged gut, swaddling for sleep-deprived dreams. Wajdi Muad writes to his infant unknowing son, Quoi dire de plus urgent que l'amour? Sometimes, Pancakes will do just as well. 13th April, 2020. Pancakes, not wheat cream. Phone calls, texts, instead of wine flavored exchanges in the public privacy of a cafe. Sauteed snow peas, shallots, chicken, wine anyway, but for one, yesterday's bread a departing moon above roof dormers, now my horizon, 14th April, 2020. My horizon, each week, the poppy printed teal hair cap of Nurse Rose, hand-stitched the florets for cheer, as she disinfects, secures, in the martial chant so dear to our president my porta cat sight. She, of calm hands and wrapped her gaze, snags any truant vein. 15th April, 2020. I play truant when I go to the bakery or Russian roulette for a baguette tradition, une réglette de macaron. I should be indoors. Back inside, I'm dizzy with fear, but I eat one, two caramel macaroons. Look, we have come through. Who knows? 15th April, 2020. Who knows anything today? Prefects, priests, pressmen, physicians, no one. Yet, wait, everyone we know, or don't, Dons shades of profit. Sun drenched flowed the Quai de Valmy and the Gemap these last afternoons while I brooded indoors with Coke as cure and company. 18th April 2020. Wolves accompany me, a dream I'd like to have. Lope across a step, howl an ode to the half moon, break bread with Alfarazdak, hunt mice if we must. Overarching the night sky blankets the city we're inured in or opens it up to hazels of rain. 19th April, 2020. A rain of hazels, petrichor from worse by long lost poets Crumble many saber-toothed day daymares, if just for a rainbow while. Ghalib, Fez, Firak, Sahir, always Sahir. Then the Dwayan, Khushro, Sufi, secular, or plain Kafir, their Ghazal, Nazam, and Sheir, the first to strike my early unlearned years, demand rebellion yet earn adoration from a resolute Gnostic heart. 20th April, 2020. 
my atheist hearts and impatient position has no words to calm vertigos, palpitations provoked by a sentence in a news brief or just the sameness of spring days that lengthen out of reach. No words then, music, numbers and feeling, metal, thoughts, reeds, wood, violin or saxophone, behind them a mind, hands, a mouth, unseen as a friend's face now. Today, the doctor's Mozart, 21st April, 2020. My doctors, Bora and Blasi, Amazons with spines of carbon steel, shafts mark truth and solace, fingers the envy of neat goldsmiths. Take the time to write and ring, to inquire and device relief with bad puns and pandemics covering for painkillers. 23rd April, 2020. Covering her face with the mask she'll wear all night. My daughter goes to meet the patient first in the queue, midnight in the ER. Through nights in Aceh after the tsunami in a hospital tent, she saw herself back in school, saw herself the physician. I imagined her then, now, at a different distance, think of her unmasking in the morning, driving home to walk the dogs. 23rd April, 2020. Home with the dogs, four, and spouse of five odd decades. My dad, veteran of three wars, child two, of World War II, famines, a blood-steeped partition, thunders of the virus, the lockdown, the distance from kin, the years of command futile before this, co before this covert agent, 24th April, 2020. And then we move on to summer. When we'd gotten out of what was a strict lockdown and, and well, could in, in theory step out at least for more than an hour. Close encounters, let's call them, of the fifth or sixth kind. In Bareilly, returning migrants get soused with liquid bleach. Yes, the kind bottled with danger to skin and eyes. To eyes and skin, as a cure by the state, no less. While Delhi shuts hospital doors on its non residents. 12th June 2020. Resident of a city, body, state of mind, I shrug off under shadows and sun on the Quai Saint Bernard. A yoga class salutes the river. A portly couple tangos to their own cassette. I walk without a mask as far as the Jardin des Plantes, 13th June, 2020. Assemblage, as far as the eye can feed, litchi, melon, mint, mango, mocha, peach, cough the sorbet and ice. Glimmer and curtsy, green, swirl in their trays to carouse with me, Isa and Nico, plotters of my first sortie outside Omen Hospital. Lambent this dusk, like our blight reunion at Bertillon, Ile Saint Louis, still Mecca for bon vivants, each palette worshipful in queue. 15th June, 2020. 
in a queue for bread outside the bakery on the boulevard, it's almost normal. An almost normal Sunday market with hand sanitizer dispensers at entrance points. Almost no distrust of the masked person next in line for cherries, shrimp, courgette, hummus, samosas, which merchants have disappeared, which shoppers I knew vaguely by sight won't I see again. It's chilly for June, 21st June, 2020. June now is the month of solstitial nights, roses, and two presidents convince the grandeur of their nations flanking from North and South the Atlantic resides in statues of dead, all too fallible men to be safeguarded far more than the breadth of today's denizens. Convinced naming evils of the past would be a crime. Mine christened it separatism. How frail must they find our lands? 27th June, 2020. Old, frail, nonetheless, I walked home from Montparnasse, invulnerable for the moment, pink kawe against the drizzle, almost midnight streets full of mostly lo local, mostly young drinkers and flaneurs, as if nothing had happened. I kept my mask on, except on the Pont where there was no one, only reverberations of music on the case. Next to Cameron's, next clusters, 29th June, 2020. Clusters of color, rain of festival blossoms, caper on Philippe's third floor balcony. They join us and a madcap even breeze to celebrate this my first visit in many months. First touch of drink, organic. Outside home and hospital since early March. 4th July, 2020. Since we, since we want to march from the hospital to the Vent de Liban and set up our tent, we should wear scrubs and masks, Rashid said. Interns, medical students, were planning one more sit-in. We'll be wearing masks anyway, said Noor. They found 40 new cases last night. 6th July, 2020. Another new case in our land, Martin Landry, all of 76, amnesty activist, acquitted after three years of legal nightmares for her solidarity to teen refugees who would have been wrongly expelled. Oh, we take pride in being playwrights of the great declaration of human rights. But it's a show we'd rather tour or license abroad than produce at home. 10th July, 2020. At home, my brain or my blood churn out symptoms, stress, swellings, dizziness, unhinged by solitude and anxiety. Telephone calls replace dinners, long walks down known, unknown streets. We're free, but who's we? It was a challenge in March. Is it perpetuity? Uh, and uh, we'll read one last section uh, that begins at uh, at the beginning at the beginning of the year that just ended. Yes, sorry, I was supposed to begin. Yes. Wear another face this year. I tell 2021, 
one will fear less, if not quite love at first sight. It lengthens this weight to be shielded like shadows at dusk. Or is this the cotangent the sun casts at dawn? The streets of Paris, cobblestone and bitumen and spit, have no answers to give me as I tread from 10th to 11th, 4th to 5th, but they console. We've seen worse. 8th January, 2021. No worse, there is none. Of course there is, but Hopkins voices my mood at three in the morning. Awake with head throbbing, sharp pain in the small of my back. Symptoms of distress, wanting out of confinement, of laptop screen dialogues. Nahid's bright sublet overlooking cobblestones, Mutabo, Bamya, Fairuz, familiar, now so strange, I felt sick. Nahid walk me arm in arm to a cab, 11th July, 2021. Let us arm ourselves with memory, lest all trace be swept under the new bordel de merde level of current chaos with variant strains, stagnant vaccination drives and other tumult. Before sunrise, January 9, outskirts of Calais, it's minus three degrees Celsius, and masked police are tearing up tents of refugees, chasing them to a hopeless frozen dawn. 13th January, 2021. Hopeless to wait for vaccine registration or for hours online. A few fortunate ones signed up, places filled in 12 hours. So live your life in suspension. Claire went for a pedicure in a housemanian flat, bought a scone on the Rue du Cherche Midi where we'd had lunch in possible September. She's 95, seen worse, on shelves Montaigne to read after she watches the news, 26 January, 2020. The news, watch me back, pleased, more pleased than Mr. Punch had ever been. I'd dance with you if I could. Mark the date. Rashid Urandan's being named future head of Théâtre National de Chaillot mecca of dance in, in France. The heart sings. Son of French Algerian parents, Rashid's coat of arms at Chaillot for the lustrum is one word, hospitality, which he's probed all these years. The heart sings. 13th February, 2021. My heart sinks as night falls, minutes later, daily. Soon, March, spring again, but curfew, confinement, still menace. All this for a few old farts who die soon anyway, comments in Le Monde. I remember the AIDS epidemic shunned gay sons. I'd rather be shunned for flamboyant life than for my own good, I think, eating a salad alone at nine o'clock for the 300th COVID time. I think we were going to stop there. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll come in and, and um, if that's okay. And, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's a beautiful dailiness to this book, um, but maybe we should back up a little bit. Now, how how long have you two known each other? I mean, since there's a you you begin this book 
writing each other how but this uh, i'm just curious how you're both poets who are from elsewhere who've settled in paris and how have you come to know each other each other and each other's work well i i've, I've been reading marilyn's work and you know learning from her work especially some of the extraordinary panoply of uh, forms that she deploys so so masterfully for years before we actually met um, I even had the pleasure to, you know, attend Shakespeare and Company events with her books, etc. Um, and then we met thanks to a mutual friend, Aviva. Uh, and, and was that in, uh, I'm trying to remember what year that was. I think it was 2012 or? Yeah, yeah. something like that, yes. <laughs> so a, de a decade now, good. And, and Karika, your work, your work, uh, you know, it's been published in India first and but it probably you know has made its way to Paris both just because people at Shakespeare and Company would bring in your work and um, and some of it's also come through the UK but I was curious uh, when Marilyn first knew got to know your work too. Well I got to know Kartika's work after, uh, after I had met her. Uh, she gave me a copy of uh, her first book Bearings which uh, I, I think at that point it had only been published and it had, had only been published by HarperCollins India and had been very well received there. Uh, and then uh, along with her, I followed the uh, composition of the incredible book Until the Lions. Uh, and I, I think Kartika didn't, I, I know I saw some of it before, before it was published and um, was, and uh, saw the India first, the, the Indian edition, the British edition, and then and and then the and then the American edition. Uh, so the book, her, her book, was fortunate enough and and very much worthy enough to be published in all in all three countries by different publishers. And, uh, yeah, you did. You did see uh, some of the uh, early. And was extremely well received. Yeah, I, I, and also we're talking poetic forms. For, for me, you're, this book, the new one you're reading from in Oranga, but Marilyn, in her the more expansive quote that's on the Indian edition, um, goes into what Kartika did in Until the Lions, because she's besides the, the material, but she says, um, I'll just read this uh, in um, metered prose and poetic forms of myriad origin, the Spanish glossa, the Mele Pantun, the Provencal Sestina, the Pashtun Lande. Shaped stanzas and uh, known forms. Anyway, it's just that the uh, until the lions has all that. So let's move closer to this book. Um, how did this get going? <laughs> I mean, you do. You, I mean, you would see each other, I'm sure, on occasions in Paris, just in daily, in regular life, or at, but, uh, but uh, when regular life, yes. But once the confinement uh, yeah. started, uh, we didn't. <laughs> Yeah. So did you, were there a little meant, you know, like one of you said, just launched a poem at the other and then you began or, um, or you were like, you know, you, I mean, because it's just an extraordinary response. Yes. <laughs> isolation and, you know, how to connect and how to, how to take this in. But it, um, it you know, it was just it was like, yeah, it was such a thing to, to read these and both as a record of that time, but even as a way to get through such times that we're still in um, with forms of isolation and remove. It was Marilyn's idea. She barely made it back from Beirut to France before the borders closed. I mean, I think I think you reached in the last 24 hours, right, Marilyn? And I was in the middle of my first cycle of chemo. And and you know, Marilyn, Marilyn one day just suggested this very shortly after the, the first lockdown was um, implemented. Via email. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I know you weren't, and 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 um, uh, and and uh, and and and, and, th and the entire book was was written with uh, by emails back and forth, sure. and I had uh, under very different circumstances written, written another book of Renga uh, with the Palestinian American poet uh, Dima Shihabi. Uh, called Diaspora Renga, which um, uh, which was published by Holland Park Press in uh, uh, in 2014, and Dima lives in California, uh, so that definitely had to take place on, the, on a computer screen. And the collaboration that took place on a computer screen, uh, so it was something I knew I liked 
doing and but Kartika also had uh, uh, I, I think were you, were you already working with Sanfona on the, uh, 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 on, the, uh, on, the, on the on the on the metro book um, do you, you mean while you were working with Dima? I think no, oh, uh, no. That, was my, that was my until the lion's face, but um, we, we finished, Sampurna and I finished writing, um, uh, uh, um, we, we finished writing um, uh, over an underground in two, early 2018 and it got published towards the end of 2018. So that was, uh, that was all written in one year? I uh, know it was written across two, two years because we began in January 2016. Because that's still good. That's still a remarkable work to, to have done in two years. Well, um, we were very fortunate, as you know, because we also had the visual art component. So that was actually what led into the, the second half of the second year, because Joel Jolive uh, went to went to Bombay and Roshni Vyam came to Paris, which, you know, swapped the gaze when it came to the visual art uh, part. So, yeah, that's that that was what sort of um, it was it was kind of staggered across the two years with the visual art segment as well. I'll just bring this what this book look like. It's a flip over book uh, and then the book meets itself, but there's uh, poems and artwork all throughout it. So um, anyway, it's a beautiful book. I, and Shakespeare ha has it in Paris, right? They still have it. Yeah, that's probably the best way. It's not brought into the U.S. at all that I know of, and although we maybe can work on that, but it's wonderful, beautifully done. And that, you know, again, artists and poets collaborating. Did, do, are there poems that, did, did you write poems that are not in this book? I mean, were there exchanges? Or was, or was this all the, I mean, how, not to get into the nitty gritty too much, but um, did you editorially go back and go through these or how? how no. Okay, these were the ones, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, we, we have, I think, about 20 more poems from, uh, April, not 20, maybe about 10 more poems from April. Over and afterwards. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so the, the writing continued until I was uh, unwell again. But, um, you know, the editors looked at it with us and asked us to, uh, to, to, to take a year, so to say. But it, all of that, all of what's written is in sequence. Um, so it's, there's just about 10 extra poems, which which were the 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 kind of the tailing off, uh, and it was a, it was a period when I was replying very sporadically, unfortunately. Yeah, and um, yeah. So the, and then then this was a finished. I mean, did you did you have a sense of where we were in the pandemic, and that it would? I guess it is. Well, it is still going on, but it's. Yeah, we, uh, we still don't know. We still don't know that. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. Like, but you're not no. still. You haven't resumed. You're still. This is this is done, and you're each moved moved on to other projects, and yeah, and you have seen each other too. I mean, it's once in the book, but you have seen each other on occasion in recent times. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. yeah. and not quite as isolated. So, um, if anyone has questions, I'm not seeing any questions. There've been a few comments, but uh, not, um, and and if Carol pass anything on that comes out from elsewhere. But um, uh, and, uh, yeah, anyway, it's just. It's, it's like, I mean, there is a book that feels like um, I, there have been other books now coming out of this period, uh, but this is one that feels like it car carries the, the real feeling of what we didn't know and the f kind of the, the fearfulness of like what it is to go get groceries and what um, those, those small, small gestures where you were seeing people for in, in, in people that you'd normally be glad to see, you know, the, the sense of where community and communion are that you mentioned, I think it's Maryland's about going for groceries. and. And that even seeing almost as a lethal concern um, by, by, the, by that with gloves and masks and all. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, I often thought of uh, uh, the, uh, the the sameness and difference between this this epidemic and the AIDS epidemic. Uh, of, I mean, the, the obvious difference being that that however well uh, well there. There's several obvious differences, but one 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 was that with the AIDS with the AIDS epidemic, that there were certain if you refrained from doing certain things, you could live a normal life. Um, and the, whereas now the the, the, the the certain things you'd have to you had to refrain from doing were um, uh, sitting sitting down in a room with another person with all your clothes on and having a conversation. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, for example, 
Yeah, the I will say probably over here, there's you know as time has passed and you know you have these the states where people have chosen not to or you know people despite science or but you know whether for, for political reasons or whatever have chosen not to then there's been this kind of strange like like you know people like okay you're choosing this you know it's it's uh it's you see some of that some of what was used that way in that time I see, there was, I see there were a couple of i'm sorry i see there were a couple of questions there was one from kate gable and uh and Norbert, Norbert's just let's see where did Kate's? Yeah, but but the, I think Kate's was first. And okay. then I saw Norbert's. Okay, let me just, go back to Kate's, which is early on. I think. Um, oh yeah. Um, would the poets comment on how you took the last lines and began the next poem, the series? I mean, just literally the, the form of the renga. I mean, um, how how you how you did that yes i'm sorry i missed that thanks Mary. um the handoff i mean what how you both have worked in that form but you still that is that yeah say a little about that Great. well i think that was pretty aleatoric of that uh, that, uh, that there was that there there was that last line with its of, of, of the of kartika kartika's for me of mine for kartika's for kartika and uh the question was to uh just Pick, pick up one of those words and, pre, and de préférence not a or the <laughs> and we didn't we, we, and we didn't descend to that uh, and uh, and then make go someplace else with that word uh, there are a couple of occasions where the word is in one language and one poem and, and there's a, a, a the word the word the word for the same thing in the, in another language in the next one but most of the time it's just a, a, a very you know direct very directly there's um, raspberries or uh, wind or uh, night or um, um, uh, and uh, I would just you know make I, and and then to have in a, in a, in the last line and then. Um, uh, get and 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 then it gets and then in my in my case I'd pick it up from Kartik and or vice versa she would uh, she would pick it up from me uh, and I think after I, I think we perhaps consciously or semi consciously you know tried to make the last lines of of each uh, of each tanka uh, uh, sufficiently interesting. Uh, both uh, so that um, there would be some kind of surprise when that word went someplace completely different than the other person's poem, and uh, at the same time, leaving an opportunity uh, for the other person to take it someplace different. Yeah, and if I can add to that, there were two things. Uh, obviously, uh, because this is a renga, each subsequent poem is predicated by what's given on that last line. Uh, but it was also predicated by the 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 you know the very immediate reality which uh, one and the other um, were experiencing. Um, so, like Marilyn said, uh, we often took a word and the context became different. So, you know, a verb would become a noun or vice versa. Um, and because we're both multilingual, I think we were fairly um, comfortable about also using different languages, though that's not very often um, that, that it happened in the last line. Uh, but context often has changed sometimes radically between one poem and the other in terms of the words that have been taken up, uh, which was also one of the great joys of, I think, the, um, you know, we hadn't thought of it as a book. It was was an exercise. And for me, it was sort of an exercise in keeping sane as well. Um, it was, yeah. So, so, so um, that, that, that was, um, I, I, I think, I mean, uh, I don't know if Sanjoy is here, but it was a bit like taking a phrase up in dance and then deploying it to a different, you know, to a different, to a different effect or, or the fluidity between taking a phrase that's existing and then, you know, reworking it or changing it. Sometimes it's one word, sometimes it's a few. I don't think we've ever taken an entire line uh, in, in the continuation or in the handing over. 
and Anita asks whether we had established any rules. Um, we didn't need to. The, the, you know, the Ranga come with their own rules, uh, or the syllabic ones to begin with, uh, apart from the continuation through connecting words. So, you know, 57577. Seven, seven, seven. And um, it, what's interesting is how it's read, because I remember we had just last month, we had a really lovely review where uh, the, the reviewer said, oh, but we've played fast and loose with the syllabic, uh, you know, the syllabic structure. And we actually haven't. It's just that words are pronounced differently in different languages, and we are dealing in multiple languages. At least I hope I, I, I at least I hope that that was why she made that mistake. But we both went, we both went back and looked and no, we had not played fast and loose. I think I think Nor I think Norbert Hirschhorn had, had a question, and I, I look after Kate did. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Kate did, and then um, her, our, Anita, our friend, had worked in okay. with on Kate's. Uh, Norbert's was. Um, I noticed each poet writes two or three rengas at a time, not just one per page. What drove that choice? No. I didn't think so. Yeah, that's why I was. Oh uh, no! I think what he means is the tanka. So uh, the renga are. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 are constituted by tanka, and we are allowed to have multiples of the the tanka. So the tanka are the five seven five seven seven uh, um, uh, stanzas, and we have uh, multiples of two or sometimes three. And I think there's one page where I have four, and I think it was our state of being on that particular day which defined um, how many multiples we had. Right. That, that's right. But it, but it's but but it's but it's definitely definitely two or three. I mean, just traditionally, it's, it's yeah. two or three. Uh, and that just my question would be, uh, how did it work? I mean, since Milkweed is a new publisher in the U.S. for both of you, how did it? Was it Fadi Judah or oh. how? how? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, Fadi suggests who my who was the, an old friend of mine and who has published his own books with, with Milkweed Edition, uh, suggested that, you know, bless him, Hamdullah, uh, that, uh, that we submitted to uh, Milkweed and, uh, uh, and we did, and they, they have been wonderful to work with. Yeah, I will say, um, knowing other, knowing, and probably they also, they would say this to many incoming books, especially of poetry, there's, this backlog, they oh well, you know, we'll do this in two or three years. And this, your book, the the beauty and the urgency of it, they didn't wait at all. I mean, this was uh, no, 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 they, they, no, they, that they was moved it up that was one, that was absolutely wonderful. That yeah, was just yeah, yeah we, it was uh, and uh, uh, and 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 with all of that, the production the production values are wonderful, and uh, uh, we were very you know, very pleased with the cover. As yeah. it happens. Uh, I know one of the book designers there from way back, um, uh, I, and I didn't even realize that she was working there. But it, it was it, it was it, so the, that and and I mean she had nothing to do with their publishing the book, but it just made it nice to one more one more agreeable person to work with. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, what Mary Austin Speaker, the, the art director, did with the cover is just fantastic. I mean, uh, Abby Decker, the artist's um, visual is, is very striking to begin with, but it was actually black and white. And so Mary Austin Speaker um, gave us a lot of options of cover combinations. And we went for this, um, you know, this sort of post-apocalyptic um, uh, <laughs> Uh, ochre and, and and deep brown uh, combination, and then she she added this touch, which I think is what was just completely, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, enchanting for us. It's the two lit windows. In, in terms of strict geography, that's not where we live. We don't live around the Eiffel Tower, but you know, it feels like that poetic license is more than justified. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I think, you know, we could, if you're, uh, unless anyone has a, anything else to say, uh, uh, because I don't want, I'm mindful that what hour it is, they're approaching midnight. I mean, uh, Kate's been wonderful with comments too. The multilingual nature of the Rengas was so rich and satisfying and the windows perfect, um, which is true. And I thank you for, um, well, we knew the Eiffel Tower wasn't quite there relative to things, but I wasn't sure if these were like a pro approximate floors of your buildings or what, or not what happens. 
it's nicely done through all that. No, we, we live in the third and the tenth, respectively. So that's very far from the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and and technically that would be to the east. So, you know, right in, in, in this we're sort of to the west of the Eiffel Tower, but um it, it, it's just it's just glorious that uh, uh the the spirit of the, the book is is just I I think we both agree, just just being so deftly captured in, in the cover. Yeah, yeah. Quite yeah, wonderful. So, for there uh, so so many nights of, of, of just being glad there was that light on in the other window. <laughs> did you write? Did you write around the same time? Did you? I mean, did you see each other's? Would you read one and then write right back, or did you sit with it for a day or two? Or how, what was, yeah, okay, very yeah, just like. Um, the the dates the dates are the you know the dates are indicative of when we wrote them. Marilyn was incredibly wonderfully responsive, and my responses varied depending on um, which part of the treatment curve I was on. So you know, um, autumn is when I was slowest, I think, and I was undergoing radiation then. And so there are times when I haven't replied for three weeks. Um, so the dates are really indicative of the rhythm with which we right. um, responded. Uh, because Marilyn does write a little about, I think, you know, being awake at night or that. I didn't know if both of you were nocturnal during this or had early, early day, you know, morning, or daybreak was, you know, whatever, different times of day were part of this. No, or, I, um, I, no, uh, no, not necessarily. I, 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 I think the, the nocturnal part was, uh, what was it was and still is just about uh, just a part of the stress that everybody is living with. Right. And uh, although it doesn't come into the book, um, uh, I had gone through treatment for breast cancer uh, several years earlier. And so uh, I certainly didn't want to bring that experience into this book, which had, which had, no, which had, had nothing to do with that in my case. Uh, uh, I did... Uh, uh, have a feeling about well more more than a feeling of uh, but uh, 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 about what about what Kartika was going through and wanting to uh, uh, be there for be there with her mm -hmm. uh, even if I couldn't actually be there with her. Yeah, yeah and and I mean this the the idea Marilyn's idea just just was. Um, just such a lifesaver um, in terms of, you know, in terms of um, maintaining some some sort of semblance of normalcy, of, of writerly normalcy to a year that otherwise um, was just defined by so much else. Um, yeah, I was, I, I was and still am really grateful for that. You asked about being nocturnal, Rick. Um, I work in performance. We are very nocturnal beasts. <laughs> yes, okay, we'll up at night. And not, it's a, it was a very different kind of thing than what Kardec was going through and what you talked about, Marilyn, in terms of your own life. But in the course of this, you, I think, had a foot or something. You were, you had, you had times when you weren't very ambulatory and then you actually got to walk again. And yes, was, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. There, there's some, you know, everyone's human time moments are in this. Yes, it was, as I, I guess it says in the part, stupid broken bone that I got. The, and as, as, soon, as soon as I could, as soon as I could go out and, and, and 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 have a and have a, have a drink in a, in, in a cafe or in fact it was a coffee nothing nothing alcoholic. I, uh, leaving the cafe, I tripped over a step and broke a metatarsal in my foot. <laughs> yeah, well, every, that whole thing where we're all in different such a different time with uh, like our uh, being, you're fragile uh, creatures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this has been marvelous, but I think. It, it, it being turning 12 o'clock um, there, we uh, probably should let you both go and, and say thank with um, heartfelt thanks for <laughs> the book and for this time, um, for the you know, just the, the, the what, what you do in the book is just marvelous and a gift. Um, and um, we, you know, the way something better than this would be, I would, Karen, my colleague and I had talked about, we should fly to Paris and do this. Since it's remote, we should be doing it there. <laughs> it could be remote from Seattle, but um, uh, but alas, not this time. But um, we hope to see everyone soon. And, we and uh, we hope to see. We I think we we both hope to see you in Seattle. <laughs> well, we would love yeah. that. Uh, both that of you. Uh, Kartika came in December, just before her last probably her last real trip before this was in December of 2019, and 
we had a marvelous reading in Seattle with um, for uh, for until the lions. So um, again, to get you both out out here would be great. And thank you to everyone again, um, everywhere you are, uh, which I know spans continents and time zones, and now moving into another day. So um, thank you, and um, take care. Be well, especially with what we're dealing with now uh, as it goes on. But um, we're, we will keep trying to navigate it, and um, definitely um, one way to keep it a, a place for it in imagination is the beautiful poems that Marilyn Hacker and Cardiff and Iyer have done in this book. So thank you again. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Good night. Thank you, Karen and Rick, uh, again. Good night. It was great to be back. Good Thanks night. very much.